Thank you, Dr. Adams, for sharing your great experience on safari technique. You really go extra miles to save uh, this patient's limbs, no question about it. So uh, I'm not going to be talking too much about data as well. I'd just like to review a few devices that we have in the market that can be used for acute limb ischemia in native vessels and in bypasses um, and stents. So these are my disclosures. Um, regardless, today there's no discussion that endovascular therapy is important to treat uh, a, the acute limb ischemia. But what is important to consider, that's more a message for our fellows here, we need to have adequate and safe access using micropuncture kits and ultrasound. And if you don't have the positive test, in other words, a good guide wire transversal test, then more likely the, your recanalization of acute limb ischemia will be unsuccessful, at least from an endovascular point of view. We can have uh, up and over access, as you can see here, or we can have integrate access for recanalization of the SFAs or any area in the lower extremity. But also recently, we've been using direct puncture of the popliteal artery, or we can uh, use puncture of the graft, like here as we couldn't, we couldn't come from above. Not puncturing distally as uh, Dr. Adams has showed, but just directly puncturing the graft with a very small wire. Also, I think we need to consider that radio access in these people might be an option, especially if the patient is overweight. Look at the amount of uh, fat around the patient's groin versus amount of uh, soft tissues around the patient's wrist. And also important in, in nasty groins, like in this patient who unfortunately had diabetes, had infection in the groin, so you want to stay away from that area. Uh, and by the way, this is just to play with our fellows here, that that mark you have in the middle Right there in the middle, and on the right lower quadrant, that X was the, where the fellow, a one week fellowship, wanted to do the puncture. So, of course, we can puncture right there. So, but that's just the first week. So, among all the techniques we have to recognize uh, our acute uh, limb ischemia, uh, we have still surgical resection is important, is, va is good, is a very uh, 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 well, there's a lot of experience on that technique. And amputation, of course, is always needs to be taken into consideration. Among the endovascular techniques, we have the fibrinolytic infusion, fibrinolytic infusion plus mechanical thrombectomy, mechanical thrombectomy only, and aspirative catheter thrombectomy. So looking at the, the, the most common, and I hear I'm not planning, planning on talking about all the devices, the ones that we have more experience with, at least. Um, the most common lytic therapies, that we, uh, drugs we use the, is a TPA and the RioPro. Using through a McNamara catheter or through the ECOS, which basically for the ones who are not familiar with ECOS, ECOS is just a catheter like a McNamara, but it has a fancy ultrasound uh, in the tip that it's supposed to enhance lytic therapy, breaking down the, the, the fibrinogen, so expediting the lytic process, basically. Among, uh, in terms of pharmaco uh, pharmacological thrombectomy, uh, we, it has been well described that uh, if the occlusion is less than, or if the acute limb scheme is less than 14 days, definitely lytics improve amputation, free survival, and provide a shorter hospital stay. Versus surgery that should be better, considered better, at least in this study, which is a classic study, uh, in patients who have acute limb ischemia more than 14 days. The problem, problem was pharmac of pharmacological, pharmacological thrombectomy is the risk of bleeding. There's a potentially higher cost with ECOS device, and of course the patients need to go to the ICU, so we have the cost of the ICU as well. Now, go, uh, and mixing now for benolytic therapy with mechanical thrombectomy, we have a few devices in the market, including the AngioJet, uh, that uh, basically creates a Venturi, a Venturi effect in the tip. Uh, also we have the trellis device, as you can see in the middle, with two, two balloons blocking the system. So we have uh, a device that can, uh, the, the middle between the two balloons, shake it up, it vibrates. You can macerate the clot, and also there's some side holes for very close, enclosed infusion of lytic therapy. In addition to that, we have, we have the hydrolyzer and the cleaner catheters as well. So the pharmacomechanical devices, uh, what is interesting to see that this device, I think, and that's what we, I've been doing at least during the last few years, is to, this device is exp is speed up the process of recanalization. And I, in some patients, I tend to favor that technique instead of a lytic therapy. Uh, provides a very good success, uh, up to 90%. Uh, more than a third of them often need associated lytics, however. 
Uh, one comment here that is very uh, very uh, frequent to hear is uh, people saying that AngelJet, for example, need to use it with Lytics. Not necessarily. I strongly believe, and we have several cases, that if you use only AngelJet, just a power spray is enough to recognize as long as the, cl the cloth is fresh. If the cloth's not fresh, probably nothing's going to help. No, nothing's going to help. The patient will need something else. If you use AngelJet, it is important to keep in mind. That's a message for our nurses, for our, our fellows. Um, the patient, you might have a phone call at night or in the next day saying the patient has hematuria. It's not hematuria. It's just microhemoglobinuria because of the breakdown of the red blood cells. And in addition to that, in order to avoid uh, uh, acute uh, renal failure for those cases or renal dysfunction, it's important to have hydration. Different types of uh, catheters now, the aspiration uh, devices, or aspirative thrombectomy catheters, we have several in the market. Uh, we've been using the export. Uh, we had the minimum experience with the Pronto, Asperax, or Indigo we've been using recently. The Indigo has a pump that basically sucks the clot out once it gets trapped in the catheter tip. Uh, the aspiration uh, catheters have uh, a few uh, important features to discuss. Uh, they have several, several different devices. Uh, it's a viable alternative, combines a diagnostic and a therapeutic procedure. You can remove clots that you cannot dissolve with lytic therapy or with uh, mechanical thrombectomy using the uh, vortex effect. So you can really remove clot, well-organized clots. The problem is you can have a risk of destabilization. And uh, however, it can be very effective, especially if you have distal occlusion of small vessels. Also, they can be used over the wire or in a more monorail system. The advantage is fast, uh, can be easily used. Um, and however, depending on the size of the clot, it can be a problem, and you might not be able to suck all the clot out. So let's go for, over a few cases. This is an older uh, patient with a sudden onset of leg pain the last three days before admission. The patient had a history of a right femur uh, bypass back in 2005. This, this case was done recently. And in 2010, had a revision of the bypass with the stenting of the distal anastomosis. Patient with the classic fit, uh, risk factors for PAD. And uh, physical examination showed the right foot with non palpable pulses or dopplerable pulses, and left foot, foot was normal pulses. So here's the ABI. You can see very reduction, a very high reduction of the ABI on the right versus a normal ABI on the left. And approximately this patient had an stenosis also at the level of the iliac, which was stented. And here, a little lower in the thigh, you can see the, the arrow pointing the, the site of occlusion of the bypass. Typical occlusion at the ostium because of the washout going to the profunda. So in more distally here, recognition at the level uh, just below the stent. The stent is blocked as well, which is more likely the culprit lesion here, why everything went down. In distally, this patient had one vessel run off. So the lesion was stented at the level of the iliac with a seven millimeter stents. And then after 24 hours of lytic therapy, we were able to open up completely the, the bypass and the culprit lesion, the stent was treated with angioplasty and the patient had a very good runoff in the end of the case. The problem, during the control angiogram, we saw this uh, um, clot, well-organized clot that was refractory to to lytic therapy, and instead of a simply doing balloon angioplasty, uh, which could shower down a migration or a embolization of clot, this was uh, a, a case done by, by Sean Hoss, my partner, and he simply used this uh, uh, catheter to suck the clot out, and that's the final result with a remarkable response, and that's pre and post images with, uh, with a very good result overall. Uh, our experience with uh, this uh, thrombectomy device, which is the Indigo device, has been, uh, was recently published at the uh, cardiovascular surgery. Uh, another case of a male, 75 years old, uh, with a right from uh, femoral pop bypass in 2011, uh, due, uh, done because of popliteal aneurysm. This patient had a history, history of a stroke recently, so there was a contraindication for lytic therapy. And this patient came to the ER with acute limb ischemia, non palpable but dopplerable pulses in the dorsalis pedis and posterior tibial. So, here is a concept that I'd like to share, especially with our fellows that if you have two lesions, there's a lesion here in the distal SFA, in, this, in another lesion below uh, at the level of the tibial perineal trunk. Uh, if you are not going to use lytic therapy, just mechanical thrombectomy to fix this problem, it's better to use instead of the classic. Uh, technique to start angioplasty or stent placement from the distal to proximal. In this case, you like to start proximal, in other words, in the SFA lesion, and then leave the 
tibial perineal trunk lesion as a buffer, as a filter to avoid migration of clots to the lower extremity. And that's what we did, is slowly increments of recognition, and you can see the injured jet uh, with the markers at the level of the knee. And then in the end, we saw the culprit lesion, which was a residual stenosis, treated with balloon angioplasty, no stents at this level, and then that's the final uh, result of uh, recognition completely just using angiojet, no lytic therapy, and no stents. <clears throat> Another case um, of uh, an acute limb ischemia as well, um, a short lesion as you can see on the right side. So this case could be done several, several ways, could be lytics, could be just a stent. We prefer to clean this first with, uh, um, with uh, uh, angiojet using a filter because this patient only had one vessel runoff, as you can see on the right side. So in those cases, we always prefer to use filter, and we are able to clean everything in a few minutes, just followed by angioplast and stent placement without much problem. Another case of a 68 years old male with a history, again, GI bleeding a few days before, so again, contraindication for lytic therapy, having harassed pain in the left foot, left foot without, with non-palpable pulses, just Doppler bone in the dorsal speed is very low ABI. And you can see here in the left right extremity uh, runoff, you can see occlusion of the proximal SFA with a reconstitution of the mid uh, third of the SFA. And this patient uh, had a good runoff, three vessels runoff. However, due to the amount of clot burden, we thought about using a filter. And here's something we can discuss later to use filters or not. And there's some evidence in the literature showing, like in this uh, study, that out of 17 cases, not many cases, but a good amount, 17 cases, all of them had fresh thrombus or some type of debris inside the filters when you have recognition of the lower extremity in acute limb ischemia. So because of that, we decided to use a filter, uh, and I think it's very important, I just would like to mention quickly, uh, patients with a poor tissue reserve, what I mean by that is patients who have very poor uh, tolerance to have further ischemia, I think we should consider that. Patients with a large clot, uh, clot burden, long cl uh, clots, and of course in patients who have a single runoff that if you block that and you cannot open up, that would be potentially uh, uh, give the patient an amputation. So as you can see here, we were able to cross uh, the, the occlusion and was a fresh clot very easily with the wire, uh, place the filter, then we have the filter in the bottom, I think you can see and started to use AngioJet. Remember, this patient had contraindication for lytic therapy. And in a matter of less than 10 minutes, using AngioJet, that's what we have here as a result. With uh, We can identify really well the two lesions, one where the markers of the AngioJet are, and the other one a little distal. We're able to do angioplasty in those two lesions with the idea, again, to avoid stent placement. We're not using drug eluting balloons here, just a regular standard balloon. And that's the final result, uh, actually t uh, intermittent result, uh, you can see there's some residual stenosis in the more distal stenosis. The proximal was, was well treated, the distal was more uh, still residual. So we place a short uh, stent in that area and that's the immediate final result. And then we simply remove the stent and we found a little bit of debris inside the stent, the, 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 a well-organized uh, clot inside the filter as you can see in this picture. And on the left, uh, previous, on the right, post-intervention. Uh, and here's a case of uh, Claudio as well, which he used a, a protection technique. This patient had a, a thrombosed uh, left iliac stent. Uh, the idea was to protect the clot that was inside the stent on the left to migrate to the contralateral stent, or also to migrate into the distal uh, left lower, lower extremity. So he very br brilliantly used the balloon at the ostium of the right common iliac artery and used a sheath and sorry for the picture quality here is not ideal, but a sheath into, sorry, a sheath in the, uh, with a sheath, sheath with, the, the, with the balloon in the tip in the um, external iliac artery, and then we're able, was, we were able to perform uh, angiojet, clean the, the lesion completely, protecting the distal on the left and the contralateral uh, limb, and that's the final result in the end with only, only angiojet pre and post. This, uh, this technique was published uh, last year uh, as well. In the final case, patient uh, with a history of fem fem, and uh, two years uh, ago, um, with the rest pain, the left foot, non palpable pulses, do just Doppler bone in the dorsal spedis, um, Doppler in the, in the posterior tibial, very low ABI. And here's the proximal uh, runoff, 
as you can see, that's a FEM FEM, which is patent, but the bypass is closed. We tried here for about uh, 15, 20 minutes to recognize through the, the, the graft, approximately, using different angles, different wires, we're, we're not able. So at this point, what we decided to do is, actually, we went down with a wire, thinking we were inside the bypass. Here, it's showing contrast, completely off track, off the vessel, off the, the, the bypass. We just recognized, we just went to the subintimal plane outside of the graft, and uh, we thought about puncturing the graft directly. So I'm, I'm going to show a quick video now that I'm supposed to have control here, but I can't. So I'm, I apologize for the speed of the video that I'm going to show in a minute here. It's supposed to be step by step. But the bottom line is we stuck the, the bypass distally under ultrasound guidance, and we, we created a, a purse string just to create hemostasis, and it was very successful. We were able to uh, you can see the graft, I believe, on the left side, a very, then one of those large tunneled uh, grafts. And then distally, that's the, the uh, runoff, very poor runoff. Um, do you have the video or? It's not in the first. Okay. Sorry. So then uh, that's the uh, distal runoff, very poor. So we knew at this point that this patient would be having high risk of amputation. Um, as you can see here, we use a McNamara catheter, a multi-perforated catheter direct to open up the, uh, by, by the bypass. We were able to open up the bypass. However, distally, uh, the patient did not do well and ended up going to an amputation. But the point I want to show this case is in case you cannot recognize in an integrated fashion through the bypass, potentially you can stick the bypass and uh, with just with a micropuncture kit, it's just a wire snare from above, and that's what the video was showing. I snare all the technique, and then eventually you can obtain access to the bypass. So, in conclusion, it's important to have a careful, uh, obtain a careful arterial access. If it's fresh clot, consider just uh, a mechanical thrombectomy. If the patient has contraindication for lytics, more likely that's enough to open up. Distal protection should be considered to avoid distal embolization. We had several cases with uh, uh, material trapped in the filter. And definitely the catheter-based treatments uh, can preserve the outcomes with less overall morbidity. Thank you.